are you? Hey everyone, it's Pastor Dan here. Thank you so much for coming today. I'm uh, really excited to bring you this message today. It's uh, something that's uh, sort of interesting, and I think you're going to find it interesting too. Uh, you would have seen already, I'm sure, from the preview, uh, that the message today is called Wake Up New. And it's a really interesting concept. Imagine this. Imagine going to sleep and then waking up as an entirely new person. Now I'm speaking metaphorically here about our spiritual journey and process about dying to self and coming alive in Christ. Now, let me make that very clear that I'm talking metaphorically here. I'm not talking about physically dying and, you know, doing whatever. <laughs> I'm talking about a spiritual journey here. Now, I once used a scripture about this topic to, uh, to play a, a practical joke on my good friend Rob. I sent him this picture of me in hospital. When he responded with, wow, why? I sent him a message that simply read, I died. I waited for a minute and then I finished the scripture by saying, to self and came alive in Christ. That's a rough, you know, Daniel translation. We're going to read the actual scripture in a moment. Honestly, I don't know that Rob's ever forgiven me for the worry and stress that I caused him for those few seconds. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. <laughs> it was actually nothing serious that I was in hospital for, just some chest pains. <laughs> this comes from Romans chapter 6, verse 11, which is the scripture that I was loosely uh, quoting there. And in Romans 6, uh, verse 11, it says, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive in God, in Christ Jesus. All right, let's take a step back here and discover where this journey all starts. Because we know that all journeys, they have to have a beginning. They have to start somewhere. So what is the reason that this scripture exists? Why would anyone want to die to sin in the first place and be alive in God or be alive to God in Christ Jesus? There must be a need. <laughs> so Romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 14, that entire passage of scripture, which includes verse 11, which I just read, is where this message comes from today. And we're going to explore what this passage of the Bible says and means. What we're going to do, instead of reading the whole lot all in one big hit, what we're going to do is we're going to read a bit, and then we'll explore it a bit. So I've done a message like this previously about another uh, passage of Scripture, but this is what we're going to do again today. Just read a few verses, then explore what that group of verses means and uh, carry on that way through this passage. And then at the end, you know, we'll sort of summarize what it all, uh, what it all means and how we can apply it. So here we go. Here's the first bit. I'm going to read Romans chapter six, verses one to four to begin with. Here it is. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. All right, let's talk about this. There's a lot in there. God is gracious to forgive us of our sins. Yes, but that doesn't mean that we should keep on sinning and taking advantage of this gracious gift. Let me use a little story, and this is a true story. 
I was very recently gifted something that was very valuable um, by some people who are very close to me. Now they gifted this to me because they love me, not because I deserve it, because in all honesty, I consider myself not worthy or deserving of anything really. It was an absolute great surprise. And I honestly did not feel like accepting the gift. However, I did humbly accept the gift with a huge, huge amount of gratitude. So the question is, what should I do now that I know that these people love me enough to sacrifice their own resources to give me a valuable gift? Should I now keep expecting them to give me valuable gifts? Should I maybe quit my job and just ask them for money and gifts from now on and just live that way? <laughs> or should I maybe just gratefully accept the gift and know that I've been blessed beyond what I deserve and look for opportunities to be a blessing to others in the future? Well, in other words, to pay it forward. Now, that's what this first part of this scripture is talking about. It's what it's saying that we've received grace as a very, very valuable gift that we don't deserve, honestly. Not so that we can keep on sinning and abuse the fact that we've received this valuable gift, but so that we can be grace givers to others. And we were baptized into his death is what this says so that we can live a new life. Not so that we can just carry on in death, but we're baptized into his death so that we can also experience a new life to wake up new, so to speak, to a life that God has created us to live. All right, let's go on. The next bit of this scripture, Romans chapter six, verses five to seven. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. All right. So if we've been baptized into Jesus' death so that we can live a new life, then we'll also share in his resurrection into our new life. Now I'm going to ask you another question here. Do you like being a slave? Ooh, <laughs> that sounds a bit offensive, doesn't it? <laughs> Considering the, the culture and society nowadays. I don't mean it like that, but let's be real here. Many of us know about slavery and how it's impacted and affected many people all over the world throughout all of history. Now, in many parts of the world, slavery has actually been abolished. It's been done away with, made illegal because it's considered oppressive and detrimental to the nature of basic human rights and freedoms. Did you hear me there? It's detrimental to the nature of basic human rights and freedoms. So why do we allow the slavery of sin to keep holding us captive and oppressed? Our price for freedom has been paid. As I've said previously, if we're Christ followers, we're no longer bodies with a spirit. We're now a spirit with a body. Now, the body is no longer who we are. It no longer directs us. It no longer makes our decisions. It's our spirit connected with the Holy Spirit who directs us and makes the decisions. Yeah, we still have a body that wants to be in control and continues to tempt us to make sinful and wrong decisions every day for our life. It's sometimes called the battlefield of the mind. It's mind versus spirit. But we now have a supernatural power within us that can overcome the wrong decisions that try to 
tempt us and keep us in slavery to sin. Okay, the next part of this scripture, Romans chapter 6, verses 8 to 10. It says, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Now, we are following in his footsteps. That's what we're called to do, imitating his example. And that's why it says that if we died with him, we believe that we will also live with him. Because that's what he did. That's, because that's what he did, that's what we do. <laughs> Jesus' death was sort of like mononucleosis, or for those of, of you in Australia, more commonly known as glandular fever, where you can only get it once. <laughs> so when Jesus died, he defeated death by coming back to life. And in taking that power from death, he now holds that power for every single one of us. Will our bodies die? Well, of course. But so what? It's only the flesh, which is not really who we are anymore anyway. We're a spirit, remember? We, meaning our spirits, will continue to live with him in his resurrection for eternity. In fact, we're already alive in the spirit if we believe in Jesus. So we're already living our lives to God and not to sin now, as this scripture says. All right, the last piece of this scripture, Romans chapter 6, verses 11 to 14, which says, In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive in God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. What a great summary. I love it. If we allow our bodies to make a decision or call the shots for anything, we're really opening ourselves up to be taken captive again back into the slavery of sin. And if we've done that in any part of our lives, I encourage us all to not let us hold us there for one second more. Rise up in the mighty power of the Holy Spirit that's in you and say, no more. Decide instead to live our lives for God, to live the life he's created us to live, to live in the blessing and protection of our Father God. The fact is that many of us might not even know that we've been taken back into the slavery of sin. Because it's sort of like a mosquito biting us. Often we don't actually feel it when it's happening. We don't realize it. But soon enough, and without fail, we will experience the effects of it. So I encourage us all right now, right here, to take, just take a few seconds to reflect on whether there is any area in our lives where we've allowed ourselves to be taken captive again into our old life of slavery to sin that oppresses us and holds us back from living in his freedom that he's already paid for for us. If we're already feeling the effects of it or not, God will bring it to mind where we may have allowed sin back in if we let him. And we need to listen to that. Repent 
and make that tough decision to stop doing that thing. Remember, it's never too late to repent and be free until it is too late. We're never too far gone to come back to or to just come for the first time to experience the freedom and grace that has been gifted to us and to wake up new to the life that we were born to live. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is true and always proves itself right. God, I ask you right now to come and show us Help us to recognize any areas in our life where we may have unknowingly or maybe even knowingly opened up any part of ourselves to come back under the slavery to sin. And more so than that, walk alongside us and help us give us the supernatural strength to put a line in the sand and say, no, no more. I'm not living that way anymore. I want to experience the full love, grace, and freedom that you have for us. Not so that we can abuse that grace and continue to sin, but so that we, having experienced that grace ourselves, can offer grace and love to others. Once again, Father, we thank you so much for this message. Help us to apply it. Help it to take root in our hearts and to bring forth new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's going to be the topic of our, of our conversation this week on our Zoom call. We're going to talk more about this together. Um, and you can find details of how to join that Zoom call uh, right on our website at www.netchurchglobal.com. Uh, there's all sorts of wonderful details on there about the Zoom call, about us, about ways to give, about all sorts of things. So I encourage you to go and check that out. There's all sorts of other ways that you can connect and contact us as well. And we'd love to start that conversation and start that relationship with you. There's emails and our social media pages, all sorts of things. Uh, some of those are just listed up here so that you can uh, go and check those out as well. Um, worship is next, so stick around for that. We'd love for you to worship with us. Um, and other than that, I just pray that you will all have a great week. God bless you. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flow and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by Your presence,
can compare You're our living hope Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, let us become more aware of your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, it's all about your presence, Lord. Come fill us, come fill us afresh.
For God is love, 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 love. The Lord is on our side. He loves us. He loves us. He fills us with hope and joyfulness. He fills us with His peacefulness. Let the joyfulness and peacefulness flow over us now. good always for God is good without fail and his mercy is everlasting the Lord will fight for you fight for you we only have to be silent he fills us with hope and joyfulness he fills us with His peacefulness. Let the joyfulness and peacefulness flow over us now. Flow over us. He fills us with hope and joyfulness. He fills us with His peace. In. Let his anointing flow over us now. Let it flow over us. Let it flow over us. Let his presence in. Let his anointing flow over us now. Let it flow over us. Let it flow over us. Let his presence in. Let his anointing flow over us now. Let it flow over us, let it flow over us. Let his presence in, let his anointing flow over us now. Let it flow over us, let it flow over us. He fills us with hope and joyfulness. He fills us with his Love